Tell us a little bit about yourself there, Greg. Uh, my name is Greg Sharp. Uh, I live in Georgetown, Texas. I'm uh, 48 years old, have uh, five children, um, currently going through a divorce, unfortunately. Um, um, I've been a business owner uh, for the last you know, 15 years or so. Uh, prior to that, um, I was uh, an employee at Schlumberger in uh, IT security. Prior to that, I was in the military on active duty for 10 years. Tell us a little bit more about your military experience. I uh, joined the Army when I was 17, uh, just before the Gulf War, and uh, spent about 12 years uh, on, uh, excuse me, about 10 years on, on active duty. It seems like a lifetime. Um, but yeah, served in the first Gulf War, um, spent a lot of time in, in Bosnia, had missions in uh, Rwanda, um, yeah, Somalia, you know, have a lot of austere uh, parts of the world during the 90s. Um, you know, overall, I, uh, I was a soldier. Uh, I did what I was told to do, um, progressed through the ranks uh, to Sergeant First Class and then uh, became a warrant officer. Um, you know, very kind of storied career. Uh, thought I was doing everything that I should do as a soldier. How did your military experience uh, affect your health overall? You know, during the 10 years I was, you know, exposed to a lot of, you know, death and tragedy. Um, but I was always just told to kind of suck it up, all right? You're, you got to be a soldier, you got to be able to process things and be able to do your job. Um, and, I, and I felt like I did it well. Um, got out in December of 2000. Um, Overall, felt good. I was having some chest pains at the time. I thought maybe it was um, some genetic issues. My grandfather had had some some heart uh, genetic issues, and my dad had had a stroke in his 40s. So, got concerned about my health overall, um, thinking that it was my heart, and you know, did a lot of tests, and come to find out, probably a year or so later, that I was having panic attacks and anxiety. Um, finally, you know, really had a uh, a breakdown in 2003 um, where I was having some suicidal ideations, um, got committed to a hospital for overnight uh, evaluation. Um, through that, uh, determined that I was uh, experiencing some pretty severe depression uh, with panic um, and was prescribed some medication. And that was, you know, 17 years ago. And I kind of just accepted the fact since then that, you know, that was part of who I was. Um, in 2008 or so, I received a notice from the military that the unit that I was in in the first Gulf War uh, had been exposed to nerve agents and that I should come in for a evaluation. You know, I, when I got out, I was one of those guys that took off the uniform and just threw it away. Uh, I didn't want anything to do with the military. Um, but this one kind of got me. Um, I would have been having migraine headaches for a long time. Um, I didn't feel like myself, um, and I still don't. I, uh, I sought out the VA, and um, at the time, they just did the evaluation and uh, said that there wasn't really anything wrong with me, so I, I again, sucked it up, moved on got back into life. I was always busy, 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 busy. Um, and my health became like secondary to me. I was a CEO of a company and I felt like the characteristics that I had in life really served me well. Um, I was a fierce negotiator. Um, I always uh, said that I was a very determined person. I wasn't necessarily gifted with a whole lot of you know, brilliant intelligence, but I had a lot of determination. I had a lot of drive. Um, You know, in 2016, I sold my company, um, really at the point of a, you know, just so much stress for so long. Um, worked for the acquirer for a couple of years, and then in 2018, stopped. And um, I wanted to spend some more time with my son. I hadn't, I hadn't seen my my children that much growing up. Uh, my four prior daughters because I was just always going. I was the provider. I was the guy uh, that needed to be doing. 
um, you know, I'm 48 at the time, I was 45, thinking that this could be my last child, just my first son. I really wanted to spend the quality time with him. Um, but I stopped, I went from 200 miles an hour to zero. Um, I coveted the time that I had with Charlie, uh, but at the same time, I wasn't feeling right. Um, racing thoughts, um, angry. Um, people during the time that I was working um, joked whether or not they were going to see Grumpy Greg today. They would have somebody go in the office and check to see if you know Grumpy Greg came to work or if it was regular Greg. But um, Grumpy Greg returned when I when I slowed down. I just I wasn't happy. There was something going on. I didn't know what it was. It wasn't depression. Um, so I I ventured back into the VA. You know, um, I was amazed that here in the Austin area they um, a world class facility um, welcomed me with open arms. I felt like I'd, I'd returned home. And it, for so long, I had just hidden things. Um, they told me pretty quickly that I had PTSD and it, how it would be affecting me. And everything, everything made sense. Everything that uh, I've been going through in my life, everything that I've been hiding, uh, repressing, um, the way that I was treating my wife, my family, my friends, my co-workers, you know, see, I think being in fight or flight really, for me, was fight. It was fight and fight and fight all the time. And that serves you well in some parts of your life and devastates others. And unfortunately, it's, it's devastated three of my attempts to have a family. Um, they... Uh, Started off with some talk, talk therapy, and um, after one of the sessions, I just totally broke down, lost it, um, severe crying spell. Um, I had to tell my wife for the first time some of the things that happened to me and what, what was going on, and it devastated her. Uh, ended up in a um, facility for a couple days uh, on suicide watch. Um, I've never really, I've never attempted suicide, I've never planned a suicide, but I just have these fleeting ideations in my head, like it's the flight response, you know, that get out of here, you don't need this, the pain can go away easy. Um, and I've developed good coping skills, um, but it's just been a challenge. You know, talk therapy just really just ripped off a, a scab or broke a bone that um, I didn't want to deal with. And um, I was uh, recommended for EMDR. I uh, started that therapy um, and just didn't feel like it was working. Um, it seemed kind of like a junk science to me a little bit. Just didn't get there. Um, then I saw a 60 Minutes episode about stellate ganglion block and how it was a breakthrough therapy for um, some you know, very decorated combat veterans, uh, folks that had gone through a lot of the similar things that I had had uh, gone through. And I, I thought that, you know, that could be a good approach. They were approaching it from a medical angle rather than a psychological angle where um, the sympathetic nervous system just gets locked in fight mode or fight or flight mode and me it's fight it's always fight except for when I have suicidal ideations um, so that was my plan was to get the stellar ganglia block treatment that was two years ago um, January in that following month I found out I had a severe AFib um, and was a severe stroke risk. The following month, I found out I had skin cancer. Um, in, in retrospect, those were secondary to what was going on in my mind. Uh, at the time, we think, you know, that, well, this is a physical issue. I have to address that now. Um, so I spent the next year focusing on my heart, focusing on my skin cancer, and doing some therapy, but not at the extent that I, I needed to. Um, 
went in for heart surgery, uh, failed, went in for a second heart surgery in February of, or March of 2020, was successful, uh, pandemic hit. Uh, I've been locked in high, high fight mode since then, protecting my family, protecting everything. Um, decimated me, decimated my family, decimated my wife um, in the end of the year with a divorce filing. Um, you know, through that, I, I realized um, and accepted that, you know, I've, I've hurt a lot of people. Um, you know, I asked God for forgiveness. I asked them for forgiveness. Um, but, you know, I need to move on with my life. I need to get healthy. Um, and so I reached out again um, to actually get this uh, SGB uh, treatment done. Um, and um, I'm, I'm hopeful. Um, something that uh, could be, um, you know, a major change in my life. Um, I'm praying that it will be. Um, I know it's not going to fix the past. I know it's not going to erase the memories. Um, but um, I'm, I'm hopeful that I can uh, find some peace. Tell us a little bit more about your PTSD and how it's been affecting you and how does it make you feel? It's kind of a good question. I think, uh, you know, looking back, before I knew I had it, I thought I had anxiety. I thought I had depression. I thought I was having you know severe migraine headaches. I thought I was having tension in my neck. Uh, my back always hurt. Um, you know, now that I've recognized what's going on, um, there's different experiences. The daily experiences, I feel like I've got a like a medieval helmet on my head, and then I'm like my upper body's like wrapped in kind of that lead blanket that you have put on you at the dentist and it's like get it off me get it off me um, and then somebody's pushing down on top of me so i have this kind of tension um, that's the physical symptoms um, my mind races from the minute i get up to the time i go to bed um, I'm always thinking about something that's always important. It's always critical. It's always more important than anything else that's going around or going on around me. Um, somebody comes and talks to me about something that's important to them. It doesn't really matter to me because my mind's racing, racing so hard. Um, I carry a lot of guilt. Um, I think that's that physical burden that I'm feeling. Um, shame, um, paranoid. Um, my specific PTSD event had to do with a small child being uh, shot in the head. Um, and I find that I get really um, hypervigilant around young children, um, anxious. Um, so, you know, um, it's, it's not one thing. Um, it's 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 a it's a multi-symptom type of um, affliction. You know, some the D is for disease. PTS is really what it is. When we look at the science behind it, um, your little brain is essentially locked in fight or flight mode. Um, I've always said, well, I'm in fight or flight. Um, there's a third option there, and that's peace. And you know, other than some you know fleeting moments in life. Um, I just haven't had them. Are there any days or moments where you feel PTSD grabs a hold of you uh, at certain times of year or certain times of the day? Yeah, that's a, actually a really good question. So um, for me, although I was exposed to a lot of um, traumatic events, um, there's one individual event that happened on Thanksgiving Day in 1996 uh, involving the death of a, a small uh, child. Um, that for some reason as October rolls around, um, I start, um, start experiencing, I'd say my PTSD goes from a five maybe to an eight, and then November rolls around, it's at a 10. Um, throughout the holidays, it's at a 10. Um, and then it, it definitely subsides uh, going into January. Um, 
but definitely the, the time leading up to and following uh, Thanksgiving uh, every year, um, looking back, is where I've had the you know, highest levels of, of PTSD. What kind of actions have you taken to, uh, to find that peace? You know, I, I don't know. I think I've been fooling myself on what peace, peace is. Maybe that's you know, laughing with some friends. Um, I, I feel alone in crowds. I um, feel like um, people don't like me. Um, I feel like I have to go the extra mile to get, get noticed. I have a blessed life. I, I did very, very well in my, my business. Um, those were the little bits, glimpse of happiness. Um, but you know, peace, peace are, is kind of a fleeting moment for me. Um, I think the only place that I really have found peace is probably in the arms of Christina. Um, and that's that's um, that's just a challenge that um, you know she she gave me some peace. Um, Charlie found I found peace with him holding my my, my son. Um, really, really inner peace. Um, I, those were special moments, um, and those are moments that I'll covet for the rest of my life. But um, I really need to find peace um, in, in the simple things in life. Um, I need to slow down, um, and hopefully. Uh, through this process, I'll be able to find some lasting peace. What are your plans today? Uh, I'm an ambassador for Mission 22. Uh, today in the United States, uh, 20 veterans commit suicide every day. Uh, back in 2012, that, that number was higher at uh, 22. Um, through Mission 22, um, you know, there's been increased awareness about veteran suicide and the epidemic that's happening. But I really want to be able to share my experiences with the veterans communities, uh, as well as you know, those that are affected by uh, PTSD. You know, it's not just the people that have PTSD, but the people that are around people that have PTSD um, bear the brunt of uh, the affected person. Um, so I want to be able to tell my story I want uh, to be able to um, catalog my journey and I'm praying that um, somebody somewhere out there someday will be able to see it uh, and potentially I can save a life, save a family. Um, that's what I'm doing today. Can you tell us about SGB and, and how it works? Good morning, my name is Dr. Kreisman and I'm an interventional pain doctor. I wanted to explain um, how the stellate ganglion block works and the science behind it. The stellate ganglion block is a collection of nerves in your neck and it is part of the sympathetic nervous system. That is the system that is responsible for the fight or flight response. It is the system that makes your heart race, makes your pupils dilate, makes your palms sweat. However, in the PTSD, that system becomes exaggerated. One thing that happens with the stellate ganglion block is we are able to separate or split off that response from the amygdala, which is a section of the brain that exists on both sides of your brain that contains the emotional memory of fear, of anger, and it can even have depression in there as well.
pressure's lifted? Yes, it's gone. Wow. Oh, thank the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> I can feel myself. It's awesome. You don't know how long it's been. We've got to find more people to uh, get this done for. It's, it's my life goal. Yeah. We'll do it. Yep. We'll do it together. I'd, I'd love to. I'm, I. It's gone. It's amazing. Like do it. Crying. Do it. I feel like running. <laughs> it's amazing. God. feels so good. It's a new version of you. <sighs> Praise God. <laughs> oh. It's gone. That's amazing. back again with Greg Sharp. Uh, we're going to follow up and see how things went for him uh, his first night after SGB. So uh, tell us, how do you feel today? You know, I, I feel like I've been reborn almost. The, um, the, the weight's been lifted. My head doesn't feel like it's being just crushed in a vice anymore. Um, I can breathe. It's like taking full breaths. Before I used to talk to somebody and I would be anxious and I would hold my breath. And uh, I've had a smile on my face since like four o'clock yesterday and people were kind of questioning, it's like, who is this dude? So um, I, I feel really good um, and it's, it's, it's promising. Uh, my thoughts have slowed down. Uh, before my thoughts would race a whole lot um, and jump to one thing and, and think negative thoughts. And it, you know, the science behind it is that I rebooted my sympathetic nervous system. So think of all the things that your little brain, your primitive brain does. It's all the things that we don't think about. It's breathing, it's seeing, um, it's, it's just so many things. And then I'm breathing better. My, my, I, there's like, my clarity with my eyesight is better. It's just amazing how something so simplistic can make such a drastic change in a short amount of time. I'm just, uh, um, I, I hope this lasts forever. Um, I'm, I'm happy. I don't feel uh, the weight of the world on my shoulders anymore. Um, I'm, I'm so happy I did this. How was your night last night, uh, first night into it? Well, as you may recall, I, I, you said, hey, you're gonna sleep eight hours tonight. And I was really looking forward to that because it's been a while. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't get that. I woke up probably around uh, two o'clock with a pain of a needle in my neck. So, um, <laughs> and then that happened again around five o'clock and so I just stayed up. So. Uh, there, there, there were some side effects. Uh, uh, initially, I had like a really red right eye, um, and it I was twitching, and I had a little bit of droopiness on the right side of my face that ran down to where the needle went in, that ran across my shoulder all the way to my right thumb. Um, that persisted probably for about four hours. Um, this morning when I woke up, I was still having a little bit of twitching in my right eye. Uh, my right eye was was clear. And then um, um, the, the pain's still there a little bit, um, but uh, definitely not as severe as it was yesterday. And overall, I, I feel great. So I'll, I'll take a numb, a numb finger or, or a red eye. So uh, really, do you, do you think it worked? 
I think it worked. I feel a hell of a lot better. Um, I, I think you think it worked. Yeah. I think all the people that have met me today think, think it worked. Um, a couple things. So I, I worked out with my trainer today, uh, and I've always had back pain and neck pain and really couldn't stretch that much. And I was getting 30 to 40% more stretch area than I, than I ever have. Um, my, my breathing, uh, when I was doing breathing exercises, were much, much uh, purer. Um, I wish that I had done this years ago, and then my trainer had said, well, it wasn't around years ago, but I wish I had done it sooner. You know, life might be a little bit different for me now, but I believe God has a path for us, and this is the path that I'm on, and I needed to take a hard path. Uh, and I think as of yesterday, I'm on a, a, a more uh, tranquil, or tranquil, peaceful path. Um, so after all this, uh, what are you looking forward to? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I would say, you know, peace, peace in my life, uh, really, truly being able to slow down, uh, taking a lot of the noise out of my life, uh, feeling like this. <laughs> if I can feel like this every day, you know, life, this is what life should be. I feel like I'm the 18 year old boy that, or young man that entered the army. Um, and don't have all that burden and that shame and all the crap that I had to go through. Um, as I said, I'm going through a divorce, so there's some things that uh, I've stayed away from in this house. Um, my uh, wife's belongings and my son's area has been really emotional for me. Um, I was able to enter there today um, and, and feel confident um, that, that things, you know, God, God has a plan. So, um, without getting overly emotional about it, um, uh, and just other things that are going on, either work-related or life-related, um, I'm, I'm able to uh, slow down a little bit uh, in my thought processes. Um, you know, you and I had a conversation this morning that I, I clearly caught myself on as I was doing it, and said, you know, if I had applied this in my home life in the past, this wouldn't be a uh, this would have had a negative outcome. So um, being able to be aware of what I'm saying, when I'm saying it, and adjust as I'm saying it um, is really something that I was poor at before, to say the least. So um, it's, it's something that I feel good about. Um, uh, you know, the doctor yesterday said, you know, people get six months, a year, you know, multiple years out of this. This is a newer uh, therapy, so we're not able to say this is gonna last for 10 years, but uh, anywhere between a $2,000 and $3,000 shot if I have to go in every six months for this, you know, sign me up. You know, as you and I had said yesterday on the way back, I want everybody to get this that has PTSD, that has something in their life that this could benefit. Uh, so moving forward in the future, that's what I want to dedicate a part of my life to, whether it's through Mission 22 or it's through some other organization that we can uh, help fundraise, we can um, bring in, we can discuss uh, uh, people's lives and how this type of therapy uh, can be life-changing as it was for me.